Thank you. My name is M.C. Gupta. I am a former civil servant. We still call ourselves civil and servant. Now I am uh, heading an industrial enterprise, Bansali Engineering, among other things. Uh, sir, my question uh, directly leads from what you were saying, bridging the divide in uh, economic terms and the non-economic terms. And you referred to the political coming together. I have heard and read uh, lots of uh, eminent political persons. I don't remember having seen your statement on that, saying that uh, coalition has uh, come to stay. And uh, one has witnessed coalitions not only in the union government, but also in the states. As a very uh, humble student of history, what I have heard as far as India is concerned is that whenever the central government was weak, the consequences were almost disastrous. And <clears throat> you refer to the present uncomfortable coalition at the union government level. My direct question to you, sir, is whether you really subscribe to the view that coalitions have come to stay or is it because we have no option for the time being? And uh, that's the uh, line of least resistance. The uh, Congress party could not hold together and lost the huge majority which they had at one time. And what you were cobbling together also couldn't reach those magic figures of 270 or so in the Lok Sabha. And that's why everybody is lauding the coalition governance. Is that so, or you feel differently? Thank you. If you were to go through the debates in the Constituent Assembly, you would notice that uh, whenever there was talk about uh, India going in for parliamentary democracy, someone or the other would also mention that a parliamentary democracy can succeed if we have a two-party system. So it was a desire on the part of all those who believed in parliamentary democracy to see that over a period of time, India also evolves a two-party system. This did not happen. Firstly, because the naturally politics in independent India were, was very much uh, shadowed by the freedom struggle, which had been fought towards the end, at least, mainly in the name of the Indian National Congress. So the Congress emerged. Gandhiji was not the view that after independence had been achieved, Congress should be wound up. But the Congress party was not agreeable to this, and the Congress became a political party of governance, and for several decades, it was uh, the only party that uh, overshadowed everyone else. We were small parties. So much so that for a long time, before the Congress party split in, nine, in Congress O and Congress I, there was not even a recognized opposition party in the Lok Sabha. Because for recognition in the Lok Sabha, a party had to have a minimum equal to the quorum, which is 54. If you have a strength of 54, only then would you be recognized as an opposition party. And there was none. One of the principal achievements that I say BJP has made, and that is in the last two decades or three decades, two decades, is that even though we have not been able to convert India into a two-party system, we have made it a bipolar polity in which there are two principal poles of national politics, namely the Congress and the BJP and all other parties. And the other parties, mind you, a large number of them are regional parties. They have to coalesce either with A or with B. They do it. And the big, another big achievement of Vajpayee's NDA government was 
that he was able to involve the regional parties also in the central government. And they acquired a national perspective on that account. We also, by working with them, were able to understand their regional aspirations better. So that at a time earlier, at that time, the Congress used to scoff at us. We were also somewhat uh, skeptical what to happen. I remember my first day in office, 19th of March, 1998, and uh, the cabinet was sworn in. I was interested in the home portfolio, came home. There, was, there were many people waiting to greet me, garland me, offer me sweets. But at the end of it, before they departing, they would come close to me, Advani ji, sarkar chalegi na? That was the skeptical question. Will this government run? How many parties? Some of them hesitant even to write to the Rashtrapati. And it's no small achievement that this government lasted for six years. No small achievement. One principal reason mean being there was one major party, much bigger than the rest. This was a principal reason. That's why also, both in Kerala as well as in West Bengal, there have been coalition governments going on for a long time. The mere fact that it is a coalition doesn't mean that it is unstable. There has to be a common minimum program. And therefore, even if the principal party has to keep aside some of its major commitments earlier, if it is a coalition government, it has to be on the basis of a common minimum program. And I feel very happy that even in that first government, all other parties agreed to our view that India must develop a credible nuclear deterrent of its own. So, March, the government was formed, and in May, India did develop that nuclear deterrent of its own. Coalition by itself should not be regarded only as a matter of compulsion. But in the Indian context, maybe we are in for coalition for quite a period of time. Advani ji, my name is Hemant Luthra. I work for Mahindra. I have a question which probably relates, um, links us to some corporate analogy. It's often said that um, one of the problems with a publicly listed company is that they have to show quarterly results. And therefore, sometimes management does not take a long-term view of what needs to be done. Um, is there something that can be done? There's a question that is posed. Um, every few years we have an election. We see some long-term vision and steps taken in the first two or three years of governance. And then every government starts to succumb to populist measures to see what, how they can win the next election. Um, has the political system devoted some thought as to whether it's possible to have coterminous um, um, governance at states and centers so that they have the luxury of taking a long-term view of what needs to be done for the country? It's a very pertinent question. And personally, I may tell you that I have had occasion to discuss this with, within my party, with other parties also. In fact, from 1952, when the first general elections were held, right up to 1967, uh, the first four general elections, all the assemblies, all the uh, Lok Sabha elections were held together. In 71, when the Lok Sabha was dissolved, and an election held, the assembly and Lok Sabha elections became delinked. Then subsequently, because of president's rule in this state, that state, gradually the situation developed when almost every alternate year, as a political party, I know it very well, we had to face either a general election or a mini general election. And in government, whether we are in the states or we are at the center, we feel that this is very harmful for good governance. Every year, you have to face an election. So much so that take a decision. This decision ought to be taken today. Everyone will say, there is an election due in Mizoram. Uh, what is that? Uh, no, no, don't do it. Don't do it. 
Now, this kind of situation, this can be sorted out if there is a consensus among political parties. Let us at least bring together the assembly and Lok Sabha elections. It may be difficult to have also the local body elections alongside, but at least if these two principal elections can be brought together, there can be a couple of devices to do that. But a consensus is needed, a desire is needed, and uh, otherwise, uh, and this would certainly benefit some parties for some time. So for that, abhi to kam se kam chodo jab tak UP ka ho na jaye, uske baad dekhenge. That kind of temptation would be there, but. I, in principle, agree that for good governance, for development, an approach of this kind is necessary. Let's get a couple of more questions quickly. Yes, sir. Thank you. Brigadier Gurmeet Kamal from the Observer Research Foundation. Sir, if India is growing at 8% or better, it is despite divisive and partisan politics. As a nation, we have a flair for creating very fine institutions, but we do not have the capacity to optimally run them and draw the best benefit from them. In the last session, the National Development Council and the Council of States came up. Take for that matter the National Security Council. My question to you, sir, is this. What will it take for our political leaders to get their act together, to come together on major issues of national interest and in parliament begin doing what parliament is meant for, to legislate, instead of becoming a kind of uh, shame that it has become in the sense that parliamentarians conduct themselves with poor dignity on the floor of the house. Thank you. Uh, your first question. Reminds me that when uh, our foreign minister had spoken about uh, uh, reaching an 8% growth, he was scoffed at Mungeri Lal Ke Hanseed Sapne in Lok Sabha itself. And I, I think that uh, this kind of comment made by the leader of the opposition at that time not only it was a uh, comment on the NDA, scoffing at the NDA, but it was belittling the capacity of the people. And therefore, it was unfortunate. Uh, we, have got, we achieved 8%, and today, if the prime minister, the, foreign, the finance minister, talks about achieving a 10% growth, I think that ambition should be fulfilled. I would be in the opposition will we fully support this kind of objective. The second part of it about uh, the Lok Sabha not functioning as it ought to, I would not dispute it. I would not dispute it. But at the same time, there are media people present here. I would like to tell them that I remember the early years when I was not in parliament, I was a journalist myself. I used to see the newspapers, which used to have two pages full of uh, the discussions in parliament in respect of legislative business, the bills that were discussed there. After all, the principal function, function of the parliament is to legislate, to frame laws. And the laws, some of them very important, they occasion very good debates, very good discussions. Lately, what has happened is that the parliament coverage is confined to more spectacular things. And over a period of time, if there is something about which the people are angry, the country is angry, and that anger is expected to be reflected even by the uh, parliament members. The, the, it's not supposed to be sufficient just to walk out from the house or to speak uh, uh, very effectively against what has happened. There has to be something more. And this has become a touchstone for judging 
whether the people's anger has been rightly reflected. Major, one, one I am not, uh, Rajdeep uh, uh, is one of those in the media and uh, I myself, and basically I am a journalist, I would think that to some extent we also can correct it. The, the, the members of parliament have a responsibility and so that responsibility uh, I would I have to convey to them. Therefore, in the very beginning, I said that those scenes are not at all, uh, do not strengthen democracy, they do not uh, strengthen the people's faith in democracy. But the thing can be corrected. One final question we'll get, and then we'll uh, have to wind up for lunch. But a final question. Yes, the gentleman there. Yes. Yes, sir. If you could keep your question short, we could get two quick questions, and he can, uh, Mr. Well, Advani, could take them both. I'll keep it very short. Ji, I... I would like to ask a question that, well, we don't see the possibility of uh, what's happening in Germany, that two major po po uh, parties, right and the left, groups coming together to form a coalition government in Germany to move forward economic reforms. But I want to ask the, the up leader of the opposition on the very important issues of uh, regulatory institutional reform, on which depends the investments in the country. We are asking for, hoping to get $150 million investment. But without having a strong regulatory framework, we can't move forward. And how far it is possible for the opposition to support at least those pieces of legislation which will help to create a regulatory institution in the energy sector, the petroleum sector, and competition bill? Speaking on behalf of my party, I would see no difficulty in uh, extending support to the government in such matters. Right. I mean, the, the gentleman there had raised his hands for some time. That's the final question we can take. Yes. I'm Jayesh Sheth from Bombay. Sir, you just raised an issue about how the present government is uh, uh, bearing down on people who report against them. But I think your government did the same thing during the Telkai expose. Things have not changed at all. And uh, my point of view is that once the party comes into power, the colors completely change. And when you go back into opposition, you come back to your righteousness. What do you have to say on this? If you give me, if you, if you give me those examples, I'll certainly see who did it, what, what, what it was done. 